Orchids are everywhere in Singapore, but they're not just decorations. Here, orchids carry ideas about identity and resilience. They're shaped through decades of research, selection and craft. So, why orchids? How did they become part of Singapore's story? And what does it take to grow the ones we see today? The story begins more than a century ago with a single hybrid. Vanda Miss Joachim, an unexpected hybrid that later became Singapore's national flower. It showed that hybridization could produce more resilient blooms and that new forms could be created. The plants can be grown under the full sun. It can easily be multiplied and propagated. It's a very free flowering plant. What started as one hybrid has grown into thousands, each shaped for Singapore's climate and for a meaning beyond its blooms. Much of that work happens here at the Botanic Gardens, where Singapore grows and studies its orchids. Few people work more closely with these blooms than Lei King. She curates the orchid collection here. Orchids play an integral role in Singapore Botanic Gardens. Since the 1870s, we have been collecting orchid species and growing them. In 1928, it started orchid hybridization program. Because of that, it started the orchid export trade. Orchids are an integral part of Singapore history and identity. Every new orchid starts with a decision. Which traits are needed? Colour, form, heat tolerance or flowering reliability? The list of creating new hybrids is endless. There's always something to improve on. Exceptional flowering qualities, nice flower arrangement, nice colour. Most importantly, it flowers throughout the year. Pollination is done by hand. Orchids have male and female part on the same plant, so they can be a mother, can also be a father. So if I decided this will be the mother, I will show that I will take out the pollen. So this is the male part. The yellow one is called the pollinia. Then I will insert it into here. Yeah. But before I put it in, I will remove the pollen from here. Because this is not to confuse the flower. Then we will put it inside here. If pollination succeeds, the seed pod forms and matures for three to six months before it's sent to the lab. One of the major concerns in the tissue culture lab is that of contamination. Gillian leads micropropagation at the Botanic Gardens, supporting orchid breeding with seed germination and cloning. Here, everything is sterilized, even the seed pod. Inside each pod, there can be millions of tiny seeds, harvested and sown onto a nutrient-rich culture. What we often do is we add coconut water or banana or potato, tomato as well. So sometimes when we're making nutrient media, it can look like a cooking show because there's a lot of chopping and blending that's going on in that lab. These seeds are then sprinkled onto the nutrient media and left to germinate. As they start growing bigger, we then have to transfer them to new flasks. When the plants are about 8 to 10 centimetres tall, we will have about 10 to 12 plants per flask. And this entire process will take about one to two years in the laboratory. From here, the seedlings move through nursery stages where they're exposed to more light, airflow and space. The focus shifts from nurture to evaluating their qualities. The flower has to be well arranged and then the colours are very attractive. We are looking for free flowering qualities and then the flower itself, whether it's uh, long-lasting because we need to use that for our display purpose. 
The plants are robust, there is no diseases, there are no viruses, resistant, it does not rot easily from the constant rain. But hybridization is not only functional, it also became a way to express something about Singapore. A way to design orchids that represent people, moments, and the country itself. The basic principle of uh, orchid breeding are actually very straightforward, but to produce an outstanding cross actually takes a lot of time, patience, and intuition, and a little bit of luck. Some orchids are created to honour visiting leaders. Others mark events, milestones or relationships. Each carries a story through its colour, form or character. When South African President Nelson Mandela visited Singapore in 1997, the team wanted a hybrid that reflected the colours of the South African flag green, red, yellow. The colours of the flowers matches closely to the national colour of South African flag. Very lucky we happen to have that hybrid. When we produce orchids that are named after visiting dignitaries, it seals Singapore's relationship with the visiting country. And as our collection grows of these VIP orchids, it is then a botanical record of our diplomatic relations over the years. Once a hybrid meets every standard and is chosen for naming, the lab begins a different process, cloning. And it begins with the smallest slice of tissue. We want to make multiple identical copies of that particular VIP orchid for display purposes. These plants are siblings of each other. They have different combinations of parental traits. The flowers may end up looking quite different from each other. The hybrid is cloned to create identical copies of that specific plant. The mixture is sealed in test tubes and placed on orbital shakers. The gentle spinning spreads nutrients evenly and draws air through the growing cells. We also want to confuse the plant cells because when they don't have a sense of direction, when they don't know which way is up or which way is down, they then reproduce in an undifferentiated manner into a mass of green cells that we call callus tissue. The more green mass we can get, the more plants we can regenerate. It is slow, meticulous work that sits behind every hybrid orchid that visitors see. So by the time visitors see a VIP orchid being displayed at our National Orchid Garden, it would usually be at least 10 years from the point of pollination. Over the decades, Singapore has bred more than 700 hybrids. More than 280 are named after VIPs and foreign dignitaries. Each one reflects moments Singapore wants to honour. Singaporean Olympic gold medalist Joseph Schooling received an orchid that mirrored his achievement. We know that he is a gold medal winner. The gold colour will be very appropriate. He's a very tall guy. So the orchid that we chose is actually a tall and majestic. Not all orchids here are hybrids. Singapore is also home to native species. Orchids that once grew naturally in our forests, swamps and coastal areas. The tiger orchid, planted in 1861, is the largest orchid species in the world. It can be found in the wild. It has been cultivated and conserved here for more than a century, with teams helping to maintain and propagate it. The method that we prefer for conservation is, of course, to collect seeds of a particular species and to germinate the seed. So if seeds are not available, we bring the plant to the laboratory for cloning. And cloning will, of course, produce multiple identical copies of that particular plant. Genetic diversity is important for survival, but we would rather have multiple individuals with the same genetic makeup than just one individual remaining in the wild. And as native species return, 
hybridization work continues to evolve. We're constantly thinking of improving our collections. So black and blues, they are not common colors in the orchid world. So what we can do is uh, we try to introduce new species or new hybrids that actually has that potential, a very contrasting color. So it will be something very new for us and it's a breakthrough in our orchid breeding. Singapore's orchid story is a blend of science, craft and culture. From the first hybrid that shaped our national flower to the hundreds created for gardens, neighbourhoods and diplomacy. Each bloom reflects years of work behind the scenes. Together, they show how Singapore grows and adapts nature for a changing city and how orchids continue to shape the places and stories around us.